Have you ever tried beading on a loom? I've looked at them and I thought they were confusing, complicated, and quite possibly boring. But I received one for a gift and I'm here to tell you it is none of the above. Beading on a loom is easy and fun and versatile and in today's video, I'll show you a bit more about it. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another Friday Findings video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. So this is the little beading loom that I received for a Christmas gift this year. It is definitely not something I would have picked out for myself, but I have really been enjoying playing with it. Now a beading loom is such a simple device. They can appear very complicated. Here are a few of the other beading looms available out there. This one is the Darice beading loom. It consists of a wire frame and coils. As you can see, those are spaces to put your warp threads in. More about that in a minute. Doris also makes a different beading loom that's a wide loom for doing bigger projects. Beadalon makes this one called the Jewel Loom, which is kind of an odd looking device, as is this plastic rapid loom, which is quite perplexing. Perhaps why I've ignored these when I've seen them, because they just look kind of intimidating. This is the Rick's beading loom, and it is the big brother to the little one that I have. This one is an interesting design. It's called the Endless Bead Loom. So I'm guessing you can make pieces as long as you want. I'm not certain because I don't have it to play with. This is the clover bead loom. And one thing you'll notice as you look at all of these is that they are basically a way to hold strands of thread parallel under tension. Whatever you're using, that's the basis of it. There are details about each one that make different aspects easier. Some you can make wider pieces, like the endless loom, you can make longer pieces. Some hold your bits and pieces spread apart for you. I even came across a pattern for making a homemade loom. As you can see, this is a pretty simple device. Just a few pieces of wood and some hardware. You don't even have to have a loom to do this kind of bead weaving. You can do it just on a shallow tray. This is one of my little flocked bead boards. You could do it in a shoebox lid or any kind of shallow tray that is a little bit rigid. It would just be a place to wrap your strands around. And I'll link to some beads. I found a whole bunch of stuff uh, at beadshop.com where they talk more about using just a, a wooden tray instead of any kind of a loom. So this is the one I got, and it's a nice little device, especially if you don't do a lot. This is the base, and I love that there's a magnet here for my needle. That's been very handy. This is the headstock and the tailstock. In mine, I had to screw in my, my the eyes, and these go, well this one goes here. This is the headstock, and then this one goes wherever you want on the board depending on the length that you want to set up. So however long a piece you want to weave, you set it up that way. It comes with three of these little rods. One of them is an extra, which is kind of nice in case you lose one. I imagine you could find like stainless steel rod if you lost all of them. And they also come with these little plastic stoppers. So what you do is you push a stopper on one end of one of these, slide it through the two screw eyes, and put a stopper on the other end. Now this is one of the designs of board that does not have uh, a place for you to separate out your bead, your thread strands, which I don't mind. I kind of like having the freedom to move them. Move them. So this is extra, and then you also get several pegs. So when you are weaving anything, there are threads going in two different directions. There are the threads that you start with, and those are called the warp. And then there are the threads that you weave into in whatever pattern you like, and those are called the weft. Now I remember that because warp comes before weft alphabetically. Uh, that just works for me. Somebody else said that you can remember it because weft rhymes with left, which goes right and left. Whatever works for you. 
So the way you start this particular loom is you take one of your pegs and you slide your warping thread into it and wrap around a few times. Now you can use anything you want here. It can be, it does not have to fit into the hole of a bead because your beads are going to go around this. You'll see what I mean. You can use, you don't have to use a fine thread like this Nymo, but if you wanted it to kind of disappear into your project, a fine thread would work great. You could use something heavier like this silk thread, which I've been enjoying using. You could even use something like Eslon, which is a pretty chunky thread, in which case it would show up more and be more of the textural interest in your project. But I'm going to use this because it's small and it's easy to pass through. So if you don't have it on a small spool, you'll have to do a little math and cut a piece. You just This is one warp thread right here. I made so many mistakes on my first piece. I'll show that to you in a minute. Then you go under. So you go over, over, under, under. Now that's two warp threads. And you want to pull them taut. You don't want to pull them as tight as you possibly can. Just taut. So that's three. And you just keep doing this for as many threads as you need for your project. One, two, three, four. So say I had a pattern with four beads. I would need five, I'd need to stop right here, five warp threads, because if we look here, we have spaces. We have four spaces. One, two, three, four. That would accommodate our pattern that was four beads across. So however many beads across you want your pattern to be, you need one more warp thread than that. Cut your thread, usually leave yourself a good amount of tail, like maybe 10, 12 inches. It's better to have a little bit more because you'll, you'll want some to weave into the end and you don't know there might be other things you want to use it for. There we go. So you pop it in there and then you wrap it around your peg and stick it in place. And what's cool is if you want to tighten this up, all you have to do is give these a twist that will tighten these. I mean, you don't want them like guitar strings, but you want them kind of snug. And those are the warp threads. And I'll show you how easy it is. It's so simple. And I, it's a really enjoyable, kind of meditative process. So I have, these are some Edo seed beads. You can use all kinds of beads. You do not have to just use single seed beads. And if you're looking for patterns, just go online and type in bead loom patterns. You will find probably more than you could make in a lifetime. There are so many out there. But take a look at these. These are using half tila beads and super duos. Now this, this one isn't a looming pattern, but you could definitely do it on a loom or patterns that use tila, full tila beads. For your weft thread or your weaving thread, you can use any thread that will go through your beads. I'm going to use this black Nymo here. Now I've seen all different ways on different patterns for how to attach your weft thread. This loom says to attach it to one of your pegs and bring it over to your project. Uh, other ones that I've seen I kind of like better just tell you to tie it on to your leftmost warp thread with a square knot and then you can weave in the end later. Now of course normally I wouldn't be using black thread with <laughs> white with these light colors but I want you to be able to see it. Now in this case it may not be necessary but they do include this little card you could use anything a business card just to help if you have especially a lot of threads and they're going up and down it might be hard to keep them straight you can weave this in and and just use it to help you um, in this case I don't think I need it so this is what you do you pick up the beads that you want in your pattern the most popular patterns that you see done in these are like the southwestern which are beautiful but there are so many other things you can do now as with many things, the very first row is the trickiest. 
So what we're going to do is try to space these threads so that they are about the same size apart as each of these beads. And what I want is one bead in each of these channels between the threads. Like I said, often the first row can be a bit of a pain in the neck. That wasn't too bad. Then you have your finger under there, pushing up. So you want the beads under. Now we're going to go over. And I want to kind of scrape the inside of that, the top of that hole, because I don't want to pierce this thread or this thread. So you kind of scrape the inside of the top of the hole, the bead hole, and just go back through all of your beads. There. So what we have uh, those white threads are sandwiched. Can you see that? Those white threads are sandwiched between, there we go, you should be able to see that, the two black threads. So the beads each has two threads going through it, and one goes under the warp and one goes over the warp. And that is it. So we'll string on more beads and, and now you'll see once you have that first row established this goes really easily. Alright, once you have the first couple rows established <laughs> it goes easily. There we go. I'm starting in the middle here. That was a tip I saw. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time looking at videos from beadshop.com. Kate Richborg has been doing a lot of weaving and that was one of her suggestions was to start your design in the middle that way you can kind of adjust it from the center out especially if you have a pattern that you want to be centered and now you can see those beads should just pop right into place there and you can see I'm just doing a simple little pattern here and I'm, I'm feeling, I'm pushing up with my finger underneath the warps and I'm also kind of pulling up a little and angling my needle up so that I can feel I'm not piercing any threads. This gives you a lot of control. See, I can, because I haven't pierced anything, I can move this to wherever I want. Like I said, I probably wouldn't recommend using black on white, but you might want that. It definitely shows. If you use something thicker, it'll add a textural element. And like I said, you don't even need to own a loom to do this exact thing. You could just use a board like this, wrap your strands around, tie them on the back, and then do your weaving. And that way you could get measurements up to as long as twice the length of your board because you can just slide things around. Here are a couple other things to think about when you are using a beading loom. And I use that term, but you don't have to just use beads on it. Yes, it's sold as a beading loom, but there's nothing to stop you from weaving with fiber just like you would on a regular loom where you think that cloth is woven. This is just a little bit of yarn that I had left over from a project. Just a few inches of yarn woven back and forth and what a beautiful textural effect. If you want something very different, this is some really cool fancy thread that I haven't used for much else. <laughs> It takes, of course, a little bit longer to weave it because it's so much more fine. But again, what a beautiful textural effect you would get. Maybe in between sections of beading or you could do something that was entirely fiber related, entirely with threads and yarns, and then you could embroider over top of it with beads or anything you like, silk ribbon. So that's just to get you thinking outside the box. Another thing about your beading loom is if you start doing some beading and you don't like it, you can take it out. I came across this pattern of beads using the tilas and the fire polish and I tried to make it work using beads I had on hand and I am just totally not happy with this. And notice that you can move this around. 
There does come a point where you have enough on here that you actually can't move things around. It doesn't want to. But at this point, you can move it. And I am just totally not happy with these colors and this combination of finishes. I don't, I like the matte black, but I don't like it here. I don't like these 15 O's. It's just so much about this I don't like. So I've got a needle and I'm just going to pull these loops that are on the ends of the warps. I'm going to pull this side. I'm going to put my hand under on this side because when I pull this side off, down those beads, oh look, they're all stuck in there. Now I have those beads off. I can put them back in their containers and use them for a project I actually like. So in just a few moments, I can have this taken apart. So don't feel like if you're doing something and you've gotten a little ways into it and you're not sure if you like it, take it apart and redo it. Try something else. It's a quick enough process that you shouldn't feel like it's so precious you can't redo it. You could see that in a matter of minutes I can have this all taken apart and I will have preserved my warp thread so I won't have to re-warp the loom if I'm doing the same kind of a design. And I saved my beads for another project. So this was the very first piece I made. Um, I think I'm going to take it apart, to tell you the truth. I made so many mistakes on this piece. First of all, I got confused about the warping, and I thought that like these two strands were one warp, so I treated them as one. So this bracelet has twice as many warp threads as it needs. I also noticed towards the end that I was running out of these beads and so I kind of switched the pattern. I did some counting and switched the pattern, but I, I, I thought it might look interesting, but I don't like it. Also, instead of having a raw edge, like on this one where you can see the thread and the insides of the beads, I put a pico stitch on these edges. However, um, I think I would have been better off to have done it with smaller beads. These are 8 O's, so I probably should have done the Pico with 11's or 15's. I'll get to this clasp in a minute, because this is a pretty cool way of finishing your beadwork. This is another one I did. This was the second one I made, and one of the things I love about the possibilities here is mixing up your bead sizes. So I have some 3mm check fire polish and some 11 O's, and then this is a finish with micro suede, which is just really cool and beautiful. And you can see how much nicer this drapes because it has half as many warp threads <laughs> as this one. It has the proper number of warp threads. So lots of fun possibilities. You can get findings like this to finish beadwork. It can be loomed or bead woven pieces. The way they work is that it has a channel with a slot. So what you would what I did here is I slid this into the last row of beads. So you cannot see the last row of beads that I wove on. So whatever you use for your looming thread, it has to be able to fit into this slot and you just and the beads can't be bigger than this this round channel. And then you just slide it on. I can kind of show you on the side here. It will sort of work, won't it? Yeah, it's not meant to go this way obviously, but you get the idea. You can just slide it on. And then when you're done, you just close that little door and you have a clasp. I'm pretty sure I'm going to take this one apart because I like these beads, but I do not like what I did here. This one, however, I love. Now, if you like wrap style bracelets, bead looming is very, very similar, nearly the exact same thing as these bracelets. I've made a video showing how to make this. This is just using two warps, and these happen to be leather cord, and then I used silk thread to wrap just a single row of beads, although in some spots I use more than one bead. The loom would do the exact same job that we've done other times. We will just tape these down to a board or something like that. So any of these could be made in the same way. Here's one that I made, another wrap style bracelet that I made using multiple rows, and you could do it in the exact same way. So there's so many possibilities. I will have links to the handmade loom, to the patterns that I showed here. 